Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm broadcasting this session to you from Budapest, Central Europe. Beautiful country, Hungary, situated in the Carpathian Basin. All right, today we are looking at an IELTS task to causes and solutions essay. Tried to make an interesting question for our viewers for today. Hi, Pavan. You got short of your results by 0.5 band. Oh no, that's always so disappointing. Uh, but the good news, Pavan, is that you're very close to your target, which means your level is very close. So don't give up, okay? Uh, in a strange way, being just 0.5 off the needed mark is a good sign, all right? Oh, just, uh, just a little bit more in either the reading or the writing section. I see, Pavan. So today will be a good class for you. But great job on the listening and speaking, uh, Pavan. That's impressive. Okay, you should be proud of those marks. They're fantastic. Uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to do, but those marks are good enough for most universities, So especially for bachelors. Uh, but I guess it's general IELTS, which is... Anyway, uh, write me an email, Pavan, and I'll help you out. Okay, everyone, uh, back to Target here. So our materials, they come from our websites, uh, gieltshelp.com for general aisles. So check out that website uh, to get lots of great materials. It looks like this with the green background. Hit that big red button to join now and get access to our premium course. It is well worth spending a couple dollars on that. Uh, if you're learning for academic IELTS, uh, go to this website with the blue background. It is aehelp.com or academicenglishhelp.com. Make sure you know which version of the IELTS you need and click that big red button to join that course. All right, back to the lesson here. Uh, if you have questions about IELTS, you're not sure, uh, you want me to clarify or about our products, send me an email, Adrian, that's my name, A-D-R-I-A-N, at G-I-E-L-T-S-H-E-L-P dot com, Adrian at G-I-E-L-T-S-H-E-L-P.com. Uh, we also do live sessions for academic IELTS on our academic IELTS uh, channel. It's called Academic English Help Channel on YouTube. Uh, we have one today for our members there. Uh, writing and speaking help is also available on the websites. Uh, these sessions are 13.30 to 14.30 Central European time. Today we are doing task two, causes and solutions type essay. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we do video shoots and are busy with other projects. So we don't have live classes. We have live classes from Wednesday to Saturday. So here is our Wednesday to Saturday schedule for next week and uh, our Wednesday to Saturday schedule from uh, the 13th to the 16th. All right, so let's have a look at our question for today. So here we go. IELTS writing task two. Uh, read with me. By the way, students, the question is in the stream description, so you can see it there as well. Okay, make it a little bit darker, a little bit more clear. Uh, so the question is in the stream description as well. You can check it any time in the lesson if you forget. Uh, let's read it together. Of course, first step, when you get to IELTS task two, read the question. Spend 40 minutes on it. Write at least 250 words. Band seven essays will be closer to 300 words. Here we go. Uh, you, Although people read mail, messages, and short articles, many individuals no longer read uh, longer books and stories frequently, especially youth. Some experts believe that this has a negative impact on people's mental and social development. What do you believe are the causes of this lack of dedicated reading and possible solutions to this situation? Okay, so a bit of a long question, but sometimes IELTS task two will have these longer kinds of questions. Okay, and then use explanations and examples from your own experience to support your points. Great. Uh, clearly, this is a first-person essay. Okay, 
What that means is that you use I, me, my in the essay. Hi, Rekha. Hi, Ali. Hi, Sahil. Hi, Patricio. Hi, Varun. Good to see many students in class. So this is a first-person essay, which means you use I, me, my, and it's persuasive, okay? So persuasive essay, you should Google that. It's always a good idea if you haven't checked it out yet. Okay, so Google what a persuasive essay is and you will learn some really good points on how to make an effective or how to write an effective persuasive essay. So persuasive essay simply means to convince your reader or audience of an idea. Okay, and this is a first person essay. It means you should use, or to be more clear, it's a first person author. Author's voice essay. You should use uh, I, me, my, myself throughout the essay. Okay, why do I know that? Can any student tell me why I know that this is a first-person essay? How do I decide? How do I decide if an essay is first-person or third-person? Hi, Abhi. Hi, Shushmit. So how do I know that? How do I know that in this essay it's okay for me to use I believe, in my opinion, I have a friend who... My younger sister, my nephews don't read any books. Pachu says, well, the question says from your experience. Yeah, and Rekha says examples from your own experience. That's right. Yeah, it says examples from your own experience. The other uh, aspect that gives me that to be very clear is the you here. Okay, so these two uh, pieces tell me that it's a first person. What do you believe? If somebody asks me, what do you believe? My answer is, I believe that. So first person, not people believe that. Um, okay, if the question says, why do people believe this? It's a third person. Okay, so it's those two pieces that tell me it's a first person response. Good. Okay, the question Always, in university, on IELTS, in high school, the question should always tell you what type of essay, persuasive, narrative, descriptive, expository, and which voice, first person, second person, third person. If you're not clear about these, uh, check out some of the videos on our channel and Google that. Okay, so Google it. That's a big, big topic to talk about. All right. So I know this. So now what is my next step? What should I do? What is a good next step after I realize that, okay, it's a persuasive, it's first person, I use I, me, my. This should only take me a couple of seconds from my 40 minutes. What's my next step? Uh, Sahil says paraphrase this question. So yeah, let's uh, paraphrase the question. Okay, sure, why not? Uh, for practice at home, you should always paraphrase the full question so that you get good vocabulary for your essay. And why? What's the other reason it's really good to paraphrase the question? And you're right, Sahil, you're right, Rekha. Okay, so why should we paraphrase? And then, yes, we definitely should plan, Nita, absolutely. That's a part of uh, this paraphrasing.
Okay, let's see what you have. Uh, Rekha says that we should uh, paraphrase so that we know that we clearly understand the question. You're absolutely right, uh, Rekha. Uh, so much so that uh, in my experience, the most common mistake in IELTS Task 2 is students are answering off topic, okay? In the IELTS, to get a high band score, seven or more, it is very, very important that you write an essay which very clearly discusses the topic and the controlling ideas, okay? If you just kind of discuss the uh, topic and controlling ideas, you will not get a very good mark. Uh, one reason is that IELTS people don't know if you're just memorizing uh, English on different topics and adapting them or using them uh, for their essays. So they need you to really specifically answer that topic, okay? Uh, Pavan, we can write populous, but communals is a bit awkward, okay? The populous, yeah. Here, let's do that. Okay, and in this case, I've changed that to reads. But sure, Pavan, that's a good suggestion. So even though the populace reads short texts, they do not engage in reading full novels with many pages, uh, especially youngsters. Some professionals state that this is a negative for uh, developing or for intelligence. Okay, let's just keep it simple. What are the reasons for this lack, this um, attitude towards reading, and how can it be solved? Okay, or how can it be changed because it's an attitude, right? Okay, so that's my paraphrase. I see a couple students have some paraphrasings already. Uh, Rekha says, nowadays, individuals, mostly the youth, mainly focus on short, short articles rather than to read full books. Uh, Rekha, that's a really nice paraphrase to start off. Hi, Mohammed Kasiri. Good to see you in class. Uh, okay, good. So yes, absolutely. Now I have a clear idea about the question, what it's asking me. And now I can plan, all right? Let's keep our planning simple so we can get into the essay. There are many strategies for effective planning, uh, like critical thinking, asking what, why, how. And also to think about what 9 out of 10 people would say. So what would 9 from 10 people say are, is or are causes or cause of why people don't read. Okay, and then the same question. So here we go, control copy. Uh, what are, what nine out of 10 people say is or are solutions to get people to read more. Okay, now try to think of two. If you want to get a nice high band, so you want to get a band seven, 7.5, or even higher band for this question, uh, try to think of two reasons why uh, people don't read long books and uh, try to think of uh, the solutions for this, okay? So what is one reason why people don't read books? Now really try to picture it, okay? Imagine if you ask 10 of your friends, hey, why don't you read long books? What do you think they would say, okay? So give me some answers, students. What do you think? most people would say for why people don't uh, read books. 
Okay, Sahil says, well, one reason is probably due to technology. Sahil says, uh, maybe it's new gadgets. Okay. I'm not sure what you mean by smart work, Rekha. So you have to be careful uh, because that's unclear. Uh, technology is not a bad start, Sahil. What kind of technology? Susmit, very good. Susmit says lack of time is one reason that a lot of people would say. Sure, not enough time. And I think the technology was a very good one. Netta says social media, mobile phones and gaming. Okay, what is that? So if we take it one step further, students, uh, mobile phones, gaming, television, going to the movie theaters. Okay, what is that? Dilpreet, hectic schedule is the same as uh, what Sussmit said, which is, he said, lack of time, which was great. Uh, I don't know about portability, Sussmit. That would be a difficult one to argue because you can have a book on your tablet or on your phone. Um, but uh, what is TV? Okay, what kind of media, Carlos? So media is general. Don't forget, media means uh, books as well. So books are a type of media. What kind of media occupies people's attention these days? Don't forget your senses, okay? Think about the basics of being human when you're thinking of uh, answers. So our senses are hearing, smell. So what kind of media? Let me help you out. Maybe uh, you haven't heard this expression in English too often. It's visual media, right? So visual media, okay? So watching movies, films, watching this guy on YouTube instead of reading your IELTS book. Hey, no, just keep watching. Kidding. No, really, read your book after the class. Uh, but uh, visual media, yeah, instead of printed media, okay? So visual media versus uh, printed media, absolutely, okay? And uh, although I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt here, uh, it's actually true what I just said as a joke here. It's great that students are joining in, learning some skills and strategies and practicing with me, but it is just as important that you spend lots of time on printed media when you're getting ready for IELTS, okay? Reading your books, reading those passages, all right? It's great for developing your knowledge, all right? Okay, uh, so there are two uh, very good uh, causes of why people don't read books these days. Not enough time and lots of visual media. All right, uh, so let's answer the second question. Uh, what would nine out of 10 people say are solutions to this? So uh, if somebody says, hey, look, Adrian, I just don't have enough time to read uh, books for IELTS. Um, then uh, what do you think I would suggest? So what do you think I would tell you if you said, hey, Adrian, I want to read all books all day long, but I just don't have enough time. Okay, Rekha says time management. Uh, what do you mean, Rekha, about time management? Manzir says take a break between your reading, that's okay. Electronic books are a, a good solution, sure. Or simply set time aside, right? Make time. So if you say, I don't have time, I would say make time. Tarun, audio books, don't cut it, okay? It's not the same listening to books as it is to actually reading them. Sussman says, hey, buy a Kindle. Kindles are great, I have one. I think it's actually within arm's reach somewhere. Um, yep, yeah, I have a Kindle. They work great. Um, but uh, the simple answer here to not enough time is make time, okay? Identify a time in your schedule. Sure, if you want to be really complex, you want to get a band nine for your essay response, you might even add the uh, make time, make books portable, and e-reader. But careful not to write too much, okay? Only do as much as you can in 40 minutes, all right? 
Um, okay, and a lot of visual media replaces books. So how can we solve that situation? So how do you think, what is a good way to uh, get people, maybe young people, to read more and help them realize uh, that reading is important and they shouldn't just pay attention to uh, visual media and watching the movies, okay? So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to read the book. Uh, I watched the movie last week and it was good, okay? So how, what should I say? What can I say? Again, visualize this, picture this. What can I tell a young person who just told me they don't want to read the book because they've watched the movie to convince them that, hey, maybe you should read the book, okay? Okay, Dilpreet says parents and teachers should encourage students uh, to read books. How? Sahil says decorate the books, okay? Add pictures, make them more interactive. That's possible, sure, Sahil. So interactive books, give them more detail and teach them. But what can I say? What can I say where the, uh, the child would say, hey, yeah, wait a second, that's maybe good. Think about an example like Harry Potter, right? Many, many young people and older people watched the Harry Potter movies, but just as many people read the books. A lot of young people and a lot of adults read the books, Harry Potter, before watching the movies. Why was that so successful? How did that happen? <laughs> Patricio's on the same page as me, I see. Patricio says, connect movies with the books like Harry Potter. Yeah, Patricio, that's a brilliant advice. And make the books available long before the movie, so don't make them at the same time, right? And also explain, that's right, Susmit, explain that imagination is magical and reading books gives a lot more detail uh, and can be a lot more enjoyable than the, than the quick movie, okay? So teaching children the value of reading that with books, you have a lot more character development, you have a lot more development in the story, uh, you have a lot more use of imagination. And in the end, even though you don't see pictures, it's actually more enjoyable than watching the story in a two-hour time period. Great. So some very smart ideas there. Okay. So teach that books can be more fun than movies. Uh, and then uh, Patricia had some good advice there, said uh, make connections among books and movies. Okay, some great advice there, students. All right, fantastic. So now you are walking towards and thinking towards a excellent uh, causes and solutions uh, type essay. So your goal now is to write a thesis. Okay. The next step is your thesis statement. I hope many of you were thinking that. Okay. So next step, thesis, good thesis will make a great essay. Bad thesis will break your essay. Please students learn to write direct thesis statements for the end of your introduction. So your thesis should be your argument and it should clearly and directly tell your reader what you are going to write about. So I should clearly know what your body paragraph one is going to be about and what your body paragraph two will be about. Okay. So Asiya, that's another good point. Teach people that reading will make you successful. Okay. Absolutely. All right, so students, write a good thesis statement for this. Hi, Jason G. Good to see a member of our other channel in here. I think there's a couple other members. Sahil, you're also a member, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no memberships on, available on this channel yet, uh, ladies and gents, but pro probably in the near future. Um, all right, so next up is your thesis. So please use this information to write a thesis statement. You can write it in one sentence that's going to be fairly complex, or you can write it in two sentences that are a little bit more simple. It doesn't matter, but make sure that your uh, thesis statement is very clear, okay? Uh, spend an extra minute 
on your thesis statement if you have to, to make sure that the grammar and the information is very, very clear. The thesis is the cornerstone of your, of your essay, okay? A cornerstone is the big stone uh, that's, um, that basically supports the weight of a structure, okay? If you go and see a church, you'll see that there's one stone in the corner that's much bigger than the other stones. It's called the cornerstone. Your thesis is your cornerstone, okay? So write me a good thesis statement that's a strong cornerstone to support your essay, okay? So Yale says, the key reason that many youngsters do not read books is because they do not have enough time and they spend uh, time with technology. Okay, Sahil, good. So that's half of your thesis. Now your other half of this, the thesis, Sahil, are the solutions, okay? So you can put a period there and then you can write another sentence, which should start with nevertheless, solutions include, and then you continue, okay? Good, but that's a good start, Sahil. That's your first half. Well written, solid. Dilpreet says, nowadays, most people spend time on visual media and are too busy to read books. Okay, quite a bit of correction there, Dilpreet, but that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. So just keep putting them in there. Okay, and then with the solutions. However, there are solutions. Okay, good. So I'm going to write my thesis while other students are working on theirs. Let's uh, keep it going. Okay, so there's my thesis. I see a couple more thesis statements have popped up. I'll look at those before we look at mine. Uh, Rekha says, it is debatable concern that youth mostly prefer short articles. The main reasons for this are they do not have enough time and a lot of visual media. Remedies include making time for books and including Impressive examples or interesting context, maybe Rekha would be a little bit better. The ending there's a little bit unclear. I was trying to figure out how to correct it, but it's a little bit awkward. Nida, please, please, please do not write a thesis within this essay. I will discuss. I'm sure you will discuss something, Nida. That's the goal of writing an essay. You don't have to tell me that. It's just wasting your time and my time, okay? So uh, let's just start, Nita, with people take less time, okay? People take less time to read books as well as uh, solutions for the rate of reading. So, Nita, let's rephrase yours, okay? So uh, people have less time to read books and more time for visual media. Solutions for improving uh, reading novels are making time and making interest for people, okay? Something like that. Uh, Saidov, just Yamshid. Uh, the majority of young adults tend to waste time on social media rather than dedicating their time on reading books. Nevertheless, solutions include, and then I see your dot, 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 Saidov. All right, good. Uh, have a look at my thesis statement. Two major reasons people do not often read novels is lack of time and attention on media. Notice the parallel grammar, lack of time with the preposition and attention on media with the preposition, okay? It's very important to have parallel grammar form. Practice uh, that at home, okay? A thesis statement has to have parallel grammar. However, solutions are scheduling, noun, and education, noun, okay? 
Now, uh, for my reader, this shows that my body paragraph one will include this problem and this solution. Okay, so an educated reader from this thesis understands that body paragraph one is lack of time and the solution scheduling. Body paragraph two is attention on media, body paragraph two, and the solution is education. Okay, does that make sense for everybody, what I just did there? Very important, okay? That sets the structure of your essay. It makes your essay cohesive and coherent. Even without having to use words like firstly, secondly, furthermore, in order that, just by information, clear information structure, I'm creating a very clear essay, okay? So does that make sense for everyone, how I did that and why this type of thesis is so important for a band seven, band eight, band nine? Uh, Dilpreet has a really good question, and Dilpreet, some other students ask me this as well. So can I write body paragraph one problems, body paragraph one solutions? If the problems and the solutions are not connected strongly, so the problems are a little bit different than the solution, then it's a good way to do it. But if the problem and the solution are closely related, like not enough time, create a schedule, then write that into one body paragraph, okay? Um, the uh, visual media and uh, making books interesting, that's a little bit more loosely connected, okay? But will still fit well into one body paragraph, all right? So I hope that's clear. So you can do it that way, Dilpreet, but it can be trickier, okay? If there's a strong connection between problem and solution, then write it into one paragraph for one and the other for the other, okay? Abdallah, thanks for letting me know that it makes sense. Uh, it's important that you communicate to me, students. So if it doesn't make sense, tell me. If it makes sense, tell me, okay? I need to know. All right. So let's uh, put our essay together now. And uh, we can put our introduction together very easily. So when you practice this or these steps at home, uh, you can really quickly put together your introduction. If you have a good introduction that's structured and has uh, clear content, the rest of the essay should be fairly easy and you can focus a lot more on the language, like vocabulary and grammar, than focusing on the content because the content is clear, okay? When you sit the IELTS, you really want to make sure that you don't have to continuously focus on content and language. It's very difficult to do that, even if you're a native speaker, okay? So you have to have a clear idea of your content before you start writing. Does that make sense? That's a very important point, okay? You can't be thinking of your ideas while you're writing, during your writing, because that's very difficult to do, to use good language, good grammar and vocabulary at the same time as you're trying to think of ideas. Okay, don't do that. Have your ideas ready in the beginning. Okay, that's why planning is so important. And it's much faster this way. Okay, because if you're thinking of content and grammar and language all at the same time, it's very slow, very disconnected writing. All right? So have your ideas ready. Okay, uh, so the introduction, really simple. It's three parts. Okay, the first part is a hook. Yes, you need it. I know students always ask me, my teacher told me don't need a hook. The book says you don't need a hook. Yes, you need a hook because it's simple, it's clear, it gets your uh, attention focused, it gets the reader's attention focused, and it starts your essay in a clear way. Um, what is a good uh, hook here? What is a good hook? There's my hook. 
you can write a lot of different kinds of hooks. Remember, the hook has to be on the topic and the controlling idea, okay? So the topic is the most important in the hook. Uh, here, reading books is very important practice to develop uh, intelligence, not do develop, that's to develop. It's a missed strike of the hand, there we go. So reading books is very important practice to develop intelligence. Boom, it's a hook. Did I catch your attention? Hopefully. Uh, and uh, is it a simple, clear sentence with no mistakes? Yes. Okay, so it's showing the IELTS examiner that I'm relaxed. I know what I'm talking about. My topic is reading books. Not just reading, okay? Reading books. Remember the question. It's in your stream description as well. We're not talking about reading because it says even though people read short text, okay, we're talking about books here, reading books. If you write your essay about just reading, you're going to get a bad mark because it's not asking you about just reading. It's asking you about reading full books, okay? Rekha says reading books is vital aspect to understand the world around us, right, Rekha? You meant to put books between reading and is, okay? Uh, Patricio says, each day people read millions of mails, short articles instead of books. That could be a problem in the future if this trend does not turn. Patricio, that's great. It's a little bit long, okay, for your hook, but you're making it very clear that we're talking about reading books, which is good, okay? So he says, nowadays reading books plays a vital role in the development of language, vocabulary, and the brain. But with the increase of technology, youngsters are not reading enough. Sahil, that's more of your body. So, sorry, that's more of your background, Sahil. That's more of your background information than your hook. Keep your hook simple, Sahil. Okay? What you wrote there should be the next sentence. All right? Uh, Labhadeeb Kaur says, yesterday's fiction is today's reality. That's an interesting hook for this topic since uh, much of our technology in the world today uh, comes from books that were written over 100 years ago. I see where you're going with that, Labhadeeb, but you have to be careful not to get too metaphysical because not every examiner will think the way I do. So I get what you're saying, but just be careful. Don't get too fancy on IELTS, okay? Keep it clear and simple, okay? All right, um, so now the background. The background is definition and uh, importance, okay? And yes, you need a background in the introduction. So definitions and importance. It's the context, right? If I'm going to tell you a story, if I'm going to write an argument for you, I have to give you the context, what we're talking about, so we're on the same page. If I don't give you a context, it will take you some time to figure out what I'm trying to say, and it's less coherent. So that's why the background is important. Now, the background is often easy because all you need to do is take your paraphrase and... Uh, Put it into the introduction. So this is my paraphrase of the original question. And all I'm going to do is just stick it into the introduction here. Okay. Now I'll definitely read through to make sure that it makes sense. So reading books is very important practice to develop intelligence. Even though the populace reads short texts, they do not engage in reading full novels with many pages, especially youngsters. Some professionals state that this is a negative for development, okay, for brain, for mental and social development. Okay, great. Now, your thesis should always show your points, the type of essay you're writing, and the voice. So, watch this important correction here. All I do now, after the background, 
And this is exactly how you practice this at home, ladies and gentlemen, to come up with some great introductory paragraphs. Introduction is your first impression. First impressions will decide the fate of your essay. If you have a good introduction, you'll get a good mark, mo more or less, so no guarantees, but more or less. If you have a bad introduction, it's probably going to be a bad mark, okay? So now comes my thesis statement. It's the third part of my introduction. Now here, I have the thesis without my opinion, and as we discussed, this is a first-person essay, so I need to add, I believe, because it's asking me, what do I believe, right? So remember the original question, don't forget that, it's your it was your first step, deciding that this is a persuasive first-person essay, okay? It's asking, what do you believe? Okay, so keep it clear. All right. So Rekha, Sahil, uh, some good background there. But again, remember, you don't have to get too fancy. Just use your paraphrase. Just use the paraphrase of the question. So you see how I constructed that introduction? Now, at this point, you must be thinking, whoa, that's kind of crazy. You literally just took those piece by piece and you puzzled it together, Adrian. Uh, I have more trouble writing an introduction when I'm not talking to a ton of students and explaining ideas, but just continuously trying to write that one idea. That's because you're trying to think of language, vocabulary, grammar, and ideas all at the same time. I did it differently. I thought of my ideas individually, use language for them, and then put them together. It's much more effective. And now I have a thesis with clear points which will guide the rest of my essay. So I just have to think of words and grammar to put it together. Okay, does that make sense? So even though I piece it by piece it, read it, it will make good sense and it will be a band nine introduction. Reading books is very important practice to develop intelligence. Even though the populace reads short texts, they do not engage in reading full novels with many pages, especially youngsters. Some professionals state that this is a negative for mental and social development. I believe two major reasons people do not often read novels is lack of time and attention on media. However, solutions are scheduling and education, okay? That will certainly be going towards a band nine if you put it together like that. If you have a couple of grammar mistakes or word use mistakes, as long as you're not changing the meaning of what you're saying, as long as I can still get that this is mostly what you're saying, you're still gonna get a band seven, okay? As long as you don't have too many mistakes. Thank you, Adam Tang, for giving me feedback. It is important for me to know that you understand me, okay? If you don't, or if something's confusing, ask. All right, again, for students who are joining in now, you can see the task two question in the stream description, okay? All right, so what comes next? Body paragraph. And I know that my body paragraph one has to include uh, lack of time, plus the solution of make time, right? Now, the body paragraph starts with a topic sentence plus explanation plus example, okay? Plus a connecting sentence, which is not absolutely necessary, but it can be good to include, especially if you're going for a band eight or nine. Okay, sentence, there we go. All right, so here, I simply want to start off with a topic sentence that expresses to the, uh, to the uh, reader that people don't have time to read books, okay? So give me a sentence, I just gave you one. People these days do not have enough time in the day to read books. Um, all right, give me a nice sentence for this. Uh, Love Hadeep Kaur, I'm not 
sure what you mean informal. Uh, you should use formal words, uh, la hadip and task too. So avoid words like huge, for example. Definitely don't use the word stuff in task two. Don't use the word things or something, sometime, etc., and so on. Don't use those words, okay? But uh, you don't need to use really fancy vocabulary, especially if it's incorrect. Sahil says, students due to lack of time are unable to read books. Okay, Sahil, you're right, but you're wrong, okay? You're right that students don't have time to read uh, full books, but we're not just talking about students. We're talking about people. So careful not to narrow your subject uh, from the group, okay? We're not just talking about students. You can say people lack time to read books. Give me a little bit more. Why do they lack time? You already said that in your thesis, so don't just repeat the thesis, Sahil. Uh, give me some more information, okay? All right. Uh... So Amandeep says, people do not have much time to read books due to their hectic schedules. Okay, Amandeep, that's a nice topic sentence. Let's take Amandeep's, okay? So many people feel that they do not have time in the day to read books because of their hectic schedules okay sure yeah we can take that one uh shushmit reddy says people often claim that they are occupied with work and family life so they cannot find time to read books good shushmit don't use uh, uh contractions in task two what that means is don't okay write do not in the essay don't write don't okay uh, Rekha says, firstly, time is important for everyone, but because of the complexities of life, there's simply not enough to read books. Rekha, that's good, okay? Uh, I see you wrote almost the same uh, coming up later, okay? All right. Uh, Abdallah, a procrastinator is a good word, so somebody that keeps putting off what they have to do, but it's off topic here. You have to make sure that you have that in your thesis if you want to talk about procrastination. Okay, so good. So now you want to give an explanation. Okay, so explain this to me, and a couple of you are already doing that. So you say that... Um, uh, surviving in today's world is very demanding with work and family. People spend 12 hours a day at their job or jobs and six hours with family, leaving no time for reading. Okay, sure, yeah. Why not? Uh, notice what I did there, students, for my explanation. So what you're doing is you're explaining your topic sentence. So what do you mean that people have hectic schedules? Explain that, right? Where is their time going? So there it's going towards survival. The world is expensive. People need to make money. So they spend a lot of time in their job. Maybe they have a second job. So you put these ideas together, okay? For students that are maybe joining in late, like Hasina Salam, uh, take a look at the question in the stream description. We're a little bit ahead now. So... Surviving in today's world is very demanding with work and family. Uh, colon, it's an explanation. People spend 12 hours a day at their jobs. 
Notice that I'm using quantitative language here, okay? And six hours with family. Now, numbers zero to 10, you should always write as words in your essay. So six hours with family, leaving no time for reading, okay? Sure. Uh, what comes next? Rekha says, as personal and professional life are vital, uh, it is very tough to find time to read books. Good, Rekha. Note my corrections there, but that was that's good. Okay. That's right, Adam. Hectic schedules is vague. So Adam Tang says, hectic schedules is so vague. Exactly, Adam. That's why the next sentence is your explanation of what you mean by hectic schedule. Right? That's what makes it more clear. An essay is always narrowing the ideas. So bigger idea, hectic schedule, narrowing the explanation, 12 hours at work, six hours with family. That leaves me four hours to sleep. That's a crazy schedule. Okay. Uh, Neda says, uh, throw an example in there. Get the example in there. Absolutely, Neda. You're right. I got to get my example in there. Um, <clears throat> me personally, I leave for work at uh, 7 a.m. In this case, you can use that at 7 a.m. and get home at 6 p.m. Which leaves me four hours to enjoy with my wife and kids and just uh, eight hours to sleep. Okay, sure. So that's my personal example. Remember um, what I said before that because this is a first person essay, so you show your voice in the thesis. I believe two major reasons people do not often read novels. I'm showing that it's my opinion. It's a first person essay. And again, I'm showing in the example that it's a first person essay. Me personally, I leave for work. Again, I'm showing it at 7 a.m. and get home. Okay. Um, now, am I done? No. I need my solution in this paragraph as well and my connection. So don't forget your solution. That's really bad for this kind of essay. So you have to have a solution. Nevertheless, I should incorporate a reading time into the day where I could read a book to my children. Uh, it is possible to set aside an hour from 8 to 9 p.m. each evening. This is one of two ways that the uh, negative trend in reading books can be changed. Okay, that's my connection. All right, and again, this previous part is my example. Here. And this part here is my solution. All right, so notice the structure here of my causes and solution essay body paragraph. I have a topic sentence, then I explain that idea. Okay, then I give a personal example because it's a first person. Then I give the solution and then I provide a connection. That's a well-structured task to causes and solutions essay that will get you a high band score. All right, hope that makes sense. And that 
is what you need to do for the second body paragraph and then the conclusion. Okay, so body paragraph two comes next. And body paragraph two is about visual media. And the solution is education. Okay, and this paragraph is for homework for students. Okay, so there we have it. The introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two. Follow the same structure that I just showed you. Topic sentence, explanation, personal example, solution, connection. You don't really need the connection because your conclusion's the last paragraph. That's fine. Uh, students, do that for homework. I challenge you, okay? Hopefully, you have a clear idea now of how you need to prepare for this kind of essay and how you need to structure this kind of essay. For those of you who missed the beginning, uh, the class is recorded and will be available on the channel in about an hour. Uh, send your homework to my email, adrian at giltshelp.com. And I will gladly give you a free score estimate of how you did on your writing and maybe even some tips on how to uh, improve, okay? So, uh, again, make sure to visit our websites, giltshelp.com. That's this website here with the green background. Click that big red button, join the full course, do yourself a favor, learn all the right strategies for many different kinds of tasks to essays uh, and uh, get a good score get band seven get higher okay if you have questions ask me for academic IELTS go to this page with the blue background click that big red button and join us there all right students that's it for me for today for this week I will be back on Wednesday okay Wednesday will be the next uh, general IELTS class and on Wednesday we are doing speaking part one and two examples and strategies. I saw that some of you have some questions like fantastic channel, send me an email or use the uh, forum on the website, the student forum. Other students can help you as well. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, everyone. Remember, you all have brilliant supercomputers on your shoulders. They are the most powerful computational uh, biological devices in the known human universe. So never let people get you down or tell you that you're not able to do what you set out to do. Even yourself, never convince yourself that you're not capable. You certainly are. People are capable of amazing feats. So believe in yourself. We believe in you. Have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, see you next week. And uh, we'll probably see some of you in 30 minutes on our Academic English Help channel uh, for some uh, speaking uh, class that's going to be for members. Bye for now, everyone. Much love to you.